do it. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest video. I'm going to be working on this antique snooker scoreboard and this is for a customer of mine. I've done a bench for him. In fact, I did two benches, but I filmed one of those. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. And this snooker scoreboard is part of another set I'm doing for him. I'm also doing two snooker QRS, which I'll feature in a separate video. So hopefully you'll enjoy the transformation. And as always, thanks for watching. This is some age. In fact, this scoreboard has come out of the oldest snooker hall in the UK. It celebrates its 110th birthday this year. It's still open, albeit my customer's father no longer runs it. But this is a really old piece of furniture. And I'll show you a little picture of the snooker hall just so you can see where this has come from. So as you can see, this scoreboard is in need of some attention. The brass there is held on with blue tack. And this little end piece is missing, so I'm going to have to do some real searching to try and find a replacement one of those. He wants it completely refinishing. The, the top is very loose. Some holes that shouldn't be there. The brass is really discoloured and the numbering has pretty much all but disappeared so I'll have to take those original numbers off when I refinish it and I need to come up with a plan on how to put those back so stay tuned for that I've never done a snooker scoreboard before, but it's the same principle, it's wood, it's brass. It doesn't really matter what it is, you just sort of approach it in a similar way. The slight problem that I have is I'm not a sign writer. You know, freehanding these letters in once it's all been refinished is going to be a bit tricky for me. So I'll think of a way to do it, which will look really nice. But what I want to do before I start is just take some photographs showing measurements of where the numbers are situated so I can replicate that once I put the numbers back on. So that's all I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do first is take these brass sliders off. But before I do that, I'm going to mark them up. So that's the top, middle, bottom. That's got blue tack on it. Most of the finish came off with the first round of stripper 
and the scraper, but I'm just using some additional stripper and 4-0 steel wool here just to give it a better finish and make sure I get as much of that old finish off as I can. I'm just using some soapy water, so some degreaser spray followed with some water just to neutralise the stripper. to be the same wood this apart from these these don't look don't really look the same I think it might be mahogany I'm just interested to see just take the dust off with some white spirit well that's that I think that's the same it's just got a bit more of a variation in it I'm just seeing whether I need to stay I think I do by the look of it yeah, it's just a it's just a great variation in the wood. It's all the same wood, just depending on where it's been cut from. It's a lovely thing, but probably stain it to be honest. I just need to repair this, this that bit and that bit. So what I'm going to do, I found a bit of oak, which when that's coloured it should be a decent match the grain is quite tight like that it should be an okay match I could either do it in one piece or I could do two separate pieces I think I'll do two separate pieces plan didn't work. So it looks okay but the gaps are a little bit too much so I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do, as you can see there I've just squared off using that and I'm going to just chisel that out square and I, then I can, just put, I can just put a straight piece in then rather than a curved piece. little piece in there now. Okay, so to glue, do the same with that, glue them in. Once they're dry I can, I can get rid of the excess and sort of blend them in. It's actually lighter than I thought, which is a bit of a pain really, but I'll just try and tone it down with a bit of stain. I'll just do this, let this dry, and then when I do the proper stain later, it'll give me a better idea. That's looking a little better already. That's got a bit more red in it, so I've got some rosewood stain. So what I might do is just put a couple of drops in that once that's dry and then try and blend it in a bit better. And then once everything's done, it should be, should be pretty good. 
I don't like this repair, it looks rubbish. I've just, I've used totally the wrong wood there. So I've been scratching around in my scrap bin and I keep all sorts of bits of wood from projects and I've managed to find this which I've cut down, sanded up and it's a much better match, much better grain pattern. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to redo this. I don't like it so it doesn't look how I'd like it to look. So I wouldn't give this to the customer in this state. So I'm going to redo this with this and hopefully it'll look much better. I won't film all that but it's the same principle and hopefully that should be a much better match. This is that repair. Like I say, it's never going to be perfect because it's you can, you're never going to get the identical same piece of wood. I mean obviously this is without stain on. So it's a million times better than it was. And it was <laughs> a lot better than that first repair I did with a wood that was totally different so yeah I'm happy with that it should look good when it's stained and finished the the brass rails on the scoreboard have stoppers on the end these brass stoppers and there was one missing now I've searched high and low different hardware stores different specialist shops online I can't find these anywhere short of buying a new scoreboard and taking one off and using it which sort of is defeats the object and it's also a bit of an expensive option. So I've bought a little sheet of brass, solid brass. I'm going to try and make one. Obviously I've never made one of these because I've never worked on a snooker scoreboard before. But I shall give it a go. So wish me luck. <laughs> That plus that plus that is 14, 23, 32. So the plan is to cut that out now. need to drill a little hole in that. So this is what I am left with. So that's the front, that's the back. I will need to bend these two first. Alright, this is going to be hard now. <laughs> I didn't think of that. do this now. If I do that, that will be in the way. I wish you could shout me through the camera and tell me because I can't get my head round how I'm going to do this. Obviously I want to bend these on this line to sort of wrap round. Um, right, I'll, I'll have a think. Sorry, I did this off camera. What I did is use a flat edge of this and got it to where I want it to bend and then holding tightly I've started it off and then just bend it back to try and get it into shape and I'll have to do the same with this so I'm getting it where I want it to bend I'm bending it like that let's close this up a little bit Right, I've shaped it. So there you go. Just needs a washer inside that now. I'll polish that up. Hopefully. Shouldn't really be able to tell. This is going to be a bit more challenging just because of the size of it but again solid brass these are the rails from the scoreboard so same process
Right, I'm going to put the scoreboard back together and then I can do what I need to do just because it's just easy to have it all in one thing rather than bits and pieces all over. So I'm going to put what I can back together and then go on to the next step. What's really interesting with this, I'll show you. Normally you have to remember where everything goes, but can you see there? There, number two is stamped on the main board. And then number two is stamped there. Number one, number one, and even these are stamped. You can't get them in the wrong place. Which is something I haven't seen before. I'm sure it's practice, but I've never seen it on anything before. And it's weird you see it on something like a snooker scoreboard. So it's helped me out. So I'll put that together now and then on to the next bit. I use some of the high glue so it's reversible. I've cleaned all the screws up on the wire wheel. The stain I'm using on this is a brown mahogany stain and that's just to even out all the tones in the wood and give it a bit of extra richness. The stain is a spirit based stain by a brand called Morels which I use quite a lot of. I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to everybody that supports the channel whether that's through the buy me a coffee link, through my Amazon wish list through comments, super thanks comments, whatever it is, I really do appreciate it. I'll leave all the links in the description if you'd like to support the channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps YouTube push this channel out to more viewers and hopefully increase my subscribers so I can keep producing videos like this for you. So as always, thanks and I hope you enjoy watching to the end. I'm going to put these on just to make sure everything's okay but I may well take them off when I do the lettering they might just be in the way but we'll see I'm trying to find the one that I made there it is or maybe not <laughs> no, I don't think that is the one Right, I've marked it all out, it's taken me ages, <laughs> just to mark out from the photographs that I took at the start. I've used the same tape measure, the same point of reference, got the right height, made sure it's level, and then I've marked where the photograph said each of the letters started. I'm going to use these that I've got, just got these I think from Amazon. They're an inch high, so it's the same height. I'm going to give it a go with some of this acrylic paint and a stencil brush. No going back now. Not too much. Here we go.
Okay, I've got myself a little blade here just to lift it. And there we go. Not bad. I've just got a lot more to do now, so that's the plan. I'll come back later on in the process and show you how I'm getting on. The stencil left, it did a good job actually, the stencil, but it left a little gap where it was attached to the main sheet. So what I'm doing here is I'm just filling those in by hand. Well, it was all by hand, but <laughs> freehand. Finished the top row. It's taken me absolutely ages. It's taken me marking it all out, doing it, drying it off so I can do the next letter, so I don't smudge the letters. <sighs> Probably about two hours just to do that. And I've not done the bottom one yet. You can see there it goes 0, 20, 40, so it goes up in 20s. So the centre part is the 10. And on the original scoreboard it just had a, green, a little green dot. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do it with this green. I'm going to use a little dowel. So I'll just do a test. There we go. There's one. So I'm just going to go along and do that. We are pretty much to the end of the restoration now. So I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And if you've liked it, please hit that thumbs up button. And I will see you in the next one. Just a couple of little bits to do. And then it's on to the final reveal. See you soon.